the WNBA season is officially over. And with so many things going on that just happened in the last two months, it leads me to ask, what the heck is going on in the WNBA right now? So with everything that's going on, I want to give you guys a brief timeline of everything. I want to start with the coaches. Now, it isn't something new to see coaches get fired, coaches get hired, especially when teams aren't performing well. But seven coaches were fired, which which is now leaving eight vacancies, including the new expansion team, the Golden State Valkyrie. What's going on on that? So here's a brief timeline of all the coaches who have been fired. Again, seven head coaches have been fired. Washington Mystics fired their coach on October 23rd. Dallas Wings fired their coach on October 18th. Atlanta Dream fired their coach on October 2nd while the playoffs was going on or after they just lost in the playoffs. Then you have the Connecticut Sun who fired their coach when they lose in the playoffs. Then you have the Indiana Fever who fired their coach. Oh, by the way, did I mention was also in the playoffs? And then you have the L.A. Sparks firing their coach. And then you have the Chicago Sky firing their coach who only had one season. So Coach Witherspoon of the Sky had one season. Kurt Miller of the Sparks wasn't a great season, but was pretty impressive. Then you have the Connecticut Suns coach who got to the semifinals and Coach uh, White gets fired. Then you have Coach Wright who gets fired, losing in the first round to the eventual WNBA champions. Then you have the Dallas Wings coach getting fired and the Washington Mystics coach getting fired. Now, Dallas Wings and the Mystics, understandable, haven't had the great season. But for majority of that list that I named, you had coaches. I had, let me count here, one, two, three coaches who were in the playoffs. Now, it might not have been the easiest season, but the teams got to the playoffs. I thought that was the job. Get to the dance and then find your way around it, unless it was something going on. So that's very interesting. And with the expansion team coming in 2025 this season and the expansion draft, who knows who the Golden State Valkyries are going to have as a head coach? So that's what's going on there. And it leads me to go, why are we having so many changes? But then there's even more. So I want to go all the way back to July. This is very important here. In July 2024, this year, the WNBA garnered a new media deal that will grant them $2.2 billion with ESPN, NBC, and Amazon, which is great. The viewership in the game has gone up very high. People are starting to watch more. And instead of you forcing yourself to or forced to buy WNBA League Pass, there's more ways you can watch it on cable, locally, or wherever you watch television. So the growth of the game is there. There's more eyes than ever. But then we fast forward to October 21st. The WNBA PA announced they were going to opt out of the CBA agreement, which isn't something new. They did this back in 2018, but it is strange. And they did it around the same time. They also got that media deal. So, again, it's not new, but it is strange for people to see a players union opt out before the season start or come to it. So if nothing happens... This can be a whole new lockout situation, and we have almost an entire year, calendar year, before the season starts. Well, this agreement is set to take place or set to end at the end of the 2025 season, so they want to work out something beforehand. So WNBA PA president uh, Neka Gumake said, opting out isn't just about a bigger paycheck. It's about claiming our rightful share of the business we built, improving working conditions, securing the future where the success we be- we create benefit benefits today's players and ge- and generations and the generations again nothing wrong with that i full heartedly agree this isn't just about increasing wages there's been multiple talks about having practice facilities everywhere there's multiple support talking about pension plans for retirement players and also having proper child care support for players who have children So there's so many things about it that I'm actually all for. I'm all for these WNBA players. A, secure your money. With the growth of the game, you should be getting profit shares. You should be finding ways to make more money as the game grows versus just where it is now. But there's also more that I'm with. I agree with them as well. Not every WNBA uh, organization has practice facilities. The Aces have them. uh, The Liberty have them. They're, They're slowly but surely coming along. So with emphasizing on increasing that makes them feel or gives them that more professional look, which I'm all for. This is a big business. And as the game continues to grow, as more people continue to watch, they should be treated as such. And also with all the fans that are coming to the game, which we all saw throughout the season, the New York Liberty started selling out stadiums. The Indiana Fever with the growth of Caitlin Clark and her fans coming along 
that put brought more eyes to not just the fever, but the WNBA in general, to where they had to go switch from playing in their their stadiums and their arenas to having to go to the NBA arenas. So the growth of the game is happening. So I am all for this. I hope the agreement does get done, which it will. As we saw in 2018, this agreement did get done when they opted out before that season. So they will work something out. And I think this is the right time for this to happen. Like I said, the game is growing as at a rapid pace that probably no one expected to grow. And with the college level players slowly starting getting their notoriety in the NIL space, that's going to lead to more eyes when they get into the W. Paige Beckners, Hannah Hidalgo, uh, Juju Watkins, etc. So as much as this game grows for the WNBA because of the young talent that we have there that's creating their own popularity, I fully believe that this is one of the best steps that they can go with. So for the WNBA Players Association, I'm all for it. You guys let me know your thoughts in the comments. And what is going to happen in this coaching search? How many coaches are going to get hired in, in this coaching cycle? Will they get the same chance as most of these coaches who had three, four years to build rosters? Or will they just get one and done? You guys let me know in the comments, and I'll see you guys at the next video.